Hello everyone, I'm James Milan. Welcome to this election coverage 2023 uh, presentation of the school committee debate. Um, before we go on, I just want to say that we here at ACMI, we work hard uh, to put this together, but we are honored to do so. Um, we have just two simple missions at ACMI, educate people around uh, all things videogra videographic and to provide value to our community. And we think that this is doing so. so uh, thank you for that uh, or for listening and let's proceed. Uh, I am joined of course here in the studio for this debate by the four candidates uh, for school committee this year. Uh, on my left is Paul Schlickman and next to him Liz Exton and then Laura Gittleson and Jill Krajewski. Uh, welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. thanks for being here. I'm um, just going to quickly uh, explain how, what the course of the debate will, will look like. Um, uh, we will begin with opening statements of one minute each. Um, the order was chosen at random, um, and it will be Laura Gittleson going first, and then Paul Schlickman, and then Liz Exton, and then Jill Krajewski. Um, and they, that will be one minute each. Then we will proceed to two rounds of questions. Uh, the first round are four questions prepared, and I will pull them out of uh, that little uh, cup and uh, just ask each of the candidates, starting with the first question being in the order of the ballot as they are seated, um, and then proceeding on from there, rotating through. Um, the respondents will get two minutes to respond, and then each of the other three candidates will have one minute uh, of rebuttal time. Um, and we will proceed through those four questions, and then the four candidates will each ask the others a question of their own choosing. Uh, and then we'll have closing statements, and that will wrap things up. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, you guys, and let's get going. We'll start with opening statements, and we start with you, Laura Gittles. Hi, I am Laura Gittleson, and I am running for school committee because I believe passionately in advocating for all of Arlington's kids to receive the best education possible. I am a mom of two, lawyer, town meeting member, and advocate for social justice. I'm the secretary of the Pierce PTO, and when APS told parents about the urgent need for substitute teachers, I signed up. I'm an active civic volunteer serving on Arlington's LGBTQIA Rainbow Commission and co-chairing the Civilian Police Advisory Board Study Committee. I'm also a leader of the Arlington chapter of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. As a parent and town meeting member, I have seen how important it is to have a well-functioning school committee, and I am excited to play a part in that hard work. My experience has given me the tools needed to work with my fellow school committee members to ensure that we support policies that are in the best interest of all of Arlington's kids. Thank you. Paul Schlichtman. Thank you. I'm Paul Schlichtman, and I respectfully ask for one of your uh, three votes in the annual town election. I have 37 years experience as an educator and 17 years on our school committee. I'm also a past president of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. I'm running for re-election because I want to continue as part of our excellent team. It's an honor and a privilege to work with my colleagues on the committee as we provide an excellent education for our children. We have met many challenges in the past three years. We reopened our schools as we emerged from the depth of the pandemic. We hired a superintendent who led us through an excellent visioning and planning process. We opened the first two new wings of our high school. There are significant challenges on the horizon. I want to thank ACMI for this opportunity to join my friends on stage to talk about the future of Arlington schools and our vision for making our schools even better. Thank you. Thank you. Liz Exton. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Exton. Most people know me as Liz. I'm running for re-election to the school committee because I am proud of the work we have done over the last three years, and I want to contribute to the ongoing efforts to improve our schools. I'm a public school teacher, a mother of two, and the current chair of the school committee. Over the last three years, we hired a fantastic new superintendent, brought students back into school during a pandemic, and celebrated the opening of the first wing of the new high school. In the next three years, realizing our strategic plan will require both experience on the school committee and the practical knowledge of a classroom teacher. The four strategic initiatives will require thoughtful planning, careful analysis, and fiscal decisions. We can improve educational opportunities for all of our students by focusing our work on those students who most need our support. 
I bring experience in public service and the perspective of a teacher and a parent to the school committee, and I'm eager to continue the work. Thank you, and Jill Krajewski. Thank you for having this debate, and thank you to the other candidates for joining the conversation. I am Jill Krajewski, a, a high school teacher for 20 years, a union leader for 15 years, and a parent of children who will be in middle and high school next year. As we come out of COVID and are poised to fully occupy a brand new state-of-the-art high school facility, I am excited about the new set of district priorities which will guide us for the next five years. My experience as an educator and union leader will help to successfully implement and evaluate these priorities, and I will use my connections as a parent to engage our community so that all of our children can experience the joy and excellence that our district embodies. Our town cares deeply about education, and I will continue to build bridges between the school and our community. That will will enable a sense of Arlington pride for many years to come. I look forward to our conversation tonight and hope to show you my enthusiasm for the Arlington Public Schools. Thank you. Thanks to you all. On to the first round of questions. As I mentioned, I will be picking them out of the um, pseudo hat here. And uh, just a reminder, two minutes to the person that I direct the question to, and then one minute for each of the other three candidates, and we will rotate through. So beginning with you, Paul Schlickman. How do you see the role of a school committee member as it relates to the larger community? The school committee is basically the liaison between the community and the schools. We take the community values and the community exp expectations and the hopes and the dreams of the community and bring them to the school governance. As you're aware, under the Education Reform Act, we operate as a board of directors. We hire a superintendent, we evaluate the superintendent, we set policy, we set budget. We're doing this all informed by the values of the community that elects us. We leave the day-to-day -day operations for the superintendent. It's not our role to interfere or get involved with the administration of the school, which is why parents and people who are concerned with the actual day-to-day -day operations of the, com of the schools in the community are best served by starting by talking to their local teacher, to their principals, and working their way up uh, the, the, uh, the, the chain in, of uh, governance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Liz? Um, the the role of the school committee member as it relates to, to the community is to be a, um, a voice for community members and sharing feedback from community members who may not feel, always feel comfortable going directly to the administration. I think it's also important for the school committee to share the school's priorities out with the community so they can understand what the school is doing um, and how the community as a whole can support, um, support our schools, thinking about how we are budgeting and planning um, because everyone in this town contributes um, to, the, to the work of our schools and supports our schools. Thank you. Laura. Thank you. Um, I, the, I, the role of the school committee is complex, but I do think one of the important roles is to act as a liaison between the community and the administration, and to do that in a variety of ways. School committee members benefit from being present in the community and realizing what our community values and taking those values to the policies and supervision that we give to the superintendent. I believe that my experience being in the schools, spending a lot of time in Pierce, where my children go, and planning on, if I'm elected, spending time in other schools, gives me a perspective that is important to bring to the administration. Paul's right, our job is not to supervise you know, the individual teachers in the schools, but it is in really important to facilitate the two-way communication between our parents and our students and our teachers and the administration. Thank you. Jill. I think the importance of the school committee is having visibility, visibility in the community and knowing that the community can have a voice um, and that voice may not be making policy, but that voice is certainly asking questions about policy, um, understanding policy well enough to ask the right questions and being able to use an open meeting to inform the community. Um, so having an understanding of who is in the community and what 
the community feels about the various issues is, is super important. Um, and I think that can be done through many informal ways as well as some of the formal ways the school committee has. So continuing to have Saturday morning discussions and, and open conversations, um, but also just being out and about and listening to parents um, and community members and really seeing how our community can get the value um, we want from our schools. Thank you. Uh, next question is going to be directed to Liz Exton. <clears throat> what is one lesson you've learned in the past year, either professionally or personally, and what will you take forward from it? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess I will share professionally. So I am a public school teacher, um, and I've worked in the public schools for the last 15 years. And the last three years have been incredibly challenging for classroom teachers, for administrators, um, the supports and the mental health challenges that students are experiencing are, are very significant. Um, and so I would say one of the lessons that I've learned in the last year around that is that it is important not to not to give up on students and continuing to believe in them and provide them with the supports that we think that they need and if that doesn't work to continue to change those things and I think the reason that's a lesson that I can use in other ways is similarly the school committee may have gone in a direction that's not working and being able to make a change and and pivot and do something differently to support our students um, is is important um, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to stretch the time frame there a little bit. Uh, a year ago, mm -hmm. I was finishing up my work as co-chair of the Police Civilian Advisory Board Study Committee, which that work had been going on for almost a year. And what I learned from that process where we brought together stakeholders from all over Arlington, people who worked for the, ta worked for the town, residents, and uh, people who are, have all sorts of interest in what the, the workings of the police and how the police interact with the community is how important it is to bring those stakeholders together, to go out and find them where they are if they're not coming to your meetings, and to use those opportunities to build a process to uh, create something that hopefully will make, help make the town better for everyone. And we did that with PCABs. We ended up with a permanent police advisory board commission that was approved by all, all unanimous vote for select board and 92% of town meeting. Thank you. Jill. Hi. Sometimes the right choice is to pull back on a policy. And so what I learned this past year as we came out of COVID and we had teachers at my school that I teach at very interested in a new schedule. Um, and as negotiations chair, I listened, I gathered data, we had surveys, we had focus groups, um, and we, I found that people were all over the board around schedule. And what ended up happening as the result of the process is deciding that we could not go forward on a schedule if it wasn't going to meet the mission of being able to better serve all students. And so to be able to, at the end of a lot of work and a lot of data, push for rather than negotiating a new schedule but to negotiate a process to look at schedule longer term um, will better meet the needs of a community. I think this applies to the school committee directly because being able to push back and stop is important. Okay, thank you very much. Paul. The, the thing I'm learning this year is to emerge from these little zoomy boxes that we've all been parked in and to start reestablishing relationships with other people. It was, it's really difficult, especially doing the work of the school committee, to have relationships with the community and with your colleagues on the committee when you're restricted to Zoom. And getting back out, you're meeting a lot of new people who didn't even live in Arlington three years ago. And reestablishing re the, the reason why you like your colleagues and you like the members of the, com uh, the community, it's, it's much easier to develop that empathy and bond when you're able to meet in person. Thank you. Um, next question, directed to you, Laura Gittleson. 
What aspect of the Arlington public school system is most pressing at this time, I, understanding that there are many, and how would you address it? I think we're lucky to be about to embark on a five-year strategic plan that looks at a lot of the issue or mo the issues that are most pressing. Um, the first one that comes to mind is the equitable access to education and the priorities that we see in the strategic plan, which mean looking at curriculum for a, in a way that will work for all students, all learners, and understanding that when we do things in the curriculum and in the schools that make learning better for all for for one set of learners, we make it better for all of the learners. One of the th ways that we can do that is by supporting strong professional development for our teachers. And the other way, another way we can do that is by really living our values. We need to enforce, or we need to talk about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion from the time our kids enter, whether they enter at pre-K or they enter at kindergarten, or if they enter sometime along the way, all the way through and only through infusing that into our curriculum are we going to grow the learners and future voters that will really take all of us into the next into the next part of history okay sorry sorry thank, mm -hmm. thank you sorry mm -hmm. so. Um, I think in our goal of collaborative partnerships, the first thing I would like to see worked on is a, a building of trust with families. And I think particularly the families I've heard from are the sp families whose students um, are not making adequate progress. Um, and I feel like what we can do is listen, um, provide a roadmap to how you access special education and other services the school provides, and work on clear communication throughout the process. Um, the other Operational types of things I think we could work on um, are looking at where we can help families feel more of a belonging. Um, a personal um, thing there is for and after school care, continuing to build that, continuing to make sure it's available for those who want it. Um, and I think the last thing to work on operationally is how do we attract and retain diverse staff? And what are the challenges to that? And um, how do we balance compensation versus belonging and staff? Thank you. Thank you. When I chaired the superintendent search committee, we did a series of focus groups. We did about 30, and one of those was in the Japanese language. Uh, but there was one consistent theme that came through, special education. The report was written that said responders in a broad consensus of those who participated in focus groups were clear that issues of special education need to be addressed as a highest priority for the next superintendent. Parents and community members were consistent and specific about what they believe are systemic and structural problems that have festered for a number of years. Now, the new superintendent in our strategic plan is looking to address this, but confidence and trust are lagging indicators. We still have work to do, and I think that one of the biggest priorities we have as a school committee is working together with the superintendent to provide her with the resources and support she needs to correct that problem. Thank you. Liz. <clears throat> um, an aspect that I think is very pressing is uh, teacher retention. Mm -hmm. We pay our teachers here in Arlington 5% less on average than the town manager 12. As I said before, teaching in the last three years has become incredibly challenging and we need to support our teachers in many ways, but number one, financially. I think that another way to support our teachers is with professional development, providing teachers with choice in what they want to be supported and what they want to learn, providing teachers with the time to have that professional development, which is in our calendar, but I think we need to maintain that. Um, and finally, we need to make sure that our paraprofessionals have the support that they need to be successful in the positions that they're placed in. They need to have training, they need to have support from teachers and other paraprofessionals so that we can keep them in our district as well. Thank you. Last question will be directed to you, Jill. Um, and I'm, I'm glad it's the last one in, in a sense because uh, your guys' uh, commitment to the welfare of the students is very clear and obvious. So 
How do you define a successful, and by successful I mean one we could all be proud of, student experience in the Arlington Public School System? As a, as a long-term teacher, what I value most in my students is whether they have a sense of belonging. Um, I've seen that with my own children. When they feel like they belong in a classroom or on a sports team um, or in some kind of extracurricular activity, they shine and they enjoy and they truly learn more. Um, so I think what we need to work on as a district is empowering teachers to make space to build connections with students and to build a classroom community to bring students with different backgrounds and perspectives together. Um, this takes time. This takes professional development and tools for teachers to have to help students engage with each other. Um, this may mean taking a close look at the curriculum. Um, how can you build in the space for students to interact with each other and truly build relationships and still have a rigorous academic experience? Um, and I believe, and I believe this for 20 years, that this can be done. Um, time can per be perceived as a cost, but I do believe that when students have a connection, they ultimately learn more and they ultimately take a better experience. Um, so I would hope that this, as a part of our district, priorities and when we discuss equity and excellence that building in curriculum and and professional development along belonging really matters um, as a professional I've worked to bring in a ninth grade program where students are in a cohort and are able to do interdisciplinary work together we teach explicitly co collaboration skills um, and that is the kind of experience that I would like every student to have everywhere um, and I would hope to be able to support through the policies and programs presented in the Arlington Public Schools. Thanks. Thank you. Paul. I look at the school climate. Uh, walking through the high school, I really find that the climate in the high school is superb. Students get along well with, uh, with each other and it's just a calm, relaxed, positive learning environment. I look for engagement, and I'm also looking for that sense of belonging, and this is where we have an issue that needs to be addressed. When we take a look at student surveys, we see that there are five focal groups that we're targeting in a strategic plan. Uh, students who identify as black or Hispanic, Hispanic uh, the LGBT, uh, QIA plus students, multilingual learners uh, and uh, families who don't speak English at home and low-income students. Their sense of belonging is reflected in our surveys is below the school as a whole and that's sort of an urgent need for us to address. Um, I, I would agree with um, the other candidates that students need to feel a sense of belonging in their classrooms and in their schools in order to be available for learning and to engage in the work that we are asking them to do. Um, I think that one of the ways that we have started to work to support that is um, eliminating fees for um, elementary music and high school athletics so that we can give more opportunities for more students to participate in those extracurricular act curricular activities because that's another place where students can mm -hmm. develop peer relationships will, which will build their sense of belonging, connecting with other adults in a school building which builds their sense of belonging and having re developing relationships. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think that we really need to work on ensuring the quality of our actual buildings, so the environment, the lighting, the air. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you very yep. much. <laughs> So I agree with um, my fellow candidates that the sense of belonging is really important, but I do think that before a sense of belonging comes a sense of safety and that we need, nobody is going to learn well in a community that they don't feel safe and they're not going to feel like they belong in a community where they don't feel safe. And so if we can get both of those things, I think then we can create a sense of joy in learning, which is what I really mm -hmm. want all of our children to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I think we do that by helping kids reach their full potential, by helping kids understand that who they are matters and who their identity is matters. And when things come up that make them question whether they matter, responding in a very strong way, which I do believe is something that we do well in Arlington and do better now than we have in the past.
Thank you very much. And we are on to the next round of questions now. My work, such as it is, uh, is done, and now you guys are going to take over. Mm -hmm. um, we will start. I'll just remind people, you have 30 seconds to ask the question. Um, and then each of the respondents has two minutes to, re to answer. And then finally, the person who asked the question gets a one-minute rebuttal. And then we will move on to the next question. We will begin with you posing the question, Paul. Thank you. Most of our work doesn't take place at our formal business meetings. It takes place in subcommittees and liaison assignments. Please describe the assignments you would like to have if you are elected on April 1st. Let's. Um. Well, I, I have uh, previously chaired the Community Relations Subcommittee, and I would like to continue to do that. I think that engagement with the community is really important. And um, I started some of that work previously with the, um, with the Saturday um, school committee chats. And based on feedback, we've expanded those to have them during the week as well so that other families can participate. Um, but I think the work, you know, now that we can get back together in the community, I think it's important to think about having those in person as well. Um, I also think it's important for us to have conversations with the community around things like the calendar, um, the literacy um, program that's developing. Um, I also, as an educator, I'm very interested in the curriculum instruction um, assessment and accountability subcommittee. I think that we're doing a lot of work around curriculum, around MTSS, around literacy, mm -hmm. around heterogeneous grouping at the high school. Mm -hmm. And I think the perspective of a classroom teacher and someone who's in a building with students, but is also a parent of children in the Arlington schools, um, brings a perspective and can ask the questions that we'd like to hear from the information we'd like to get from the administration um, in order to get that information. And it has been an honor and a privilege to have been the chair for the last year. It's, um, I've worked very hard and worked very closely with Dr. Homan. Um, I will be passing that torch along, but um, that was a role that I also very much appreciated and was honored to play. Thank you. Thank you. Laura? This is a hard question to answer because I don't think any of us would be up here running for school committee if we weren't interested in all of the work that the school committee does. Um, I will uh, confess to some of my nerdy policy background and the fact that I have watched a lot of the budget subcommittee meetings over the last month or two. And I have learned so much about, about how the budget works and how the budget really helps us live the values that we we talk about uh, so much. Which, um, so I, you know, our budget subcommittee is is well populated by experienced school committee members. I don't know if there would be a space, but it is something I'm interested in. In terms of liaison, um, like other people have mentioned, I think one group of families and students who are people who really need to be listened to, and we need to pay a little more attention to our families whose children have, are, have special education needs. So I would really love to be the liaison to CPAC. I've spent a lot of time talking to families with kids with special education needs over the last couple of months, and I think that we need to build communication and trust in particular with that com community. And then I think lastly, I would say that the curriculum and instruction committee, I've been excited through my work with the uh, Rainbow Commission to be a part of the work that has furthered our, our new health and wellness curriculum to be inclusive of students of all genders. And it's a place where you can see how curriculum makes such a difference in what we were talking about before in terms of students' feelings of safety and belonging and then that leading to what they really all deserve, which is joy. Thank you. Jill. I would be most interested in working with the curriculum assessment and accountability. Um, I believe that it is really important to have a process when bringing on curriculum. Um, particularly, I'm excited that the Arlington Public Schools in, is investing in a new literacy curriculum. Um, kind of because I like the idea of how do you roll out a curriculum? How do you help engage teachers in the process? Allow teachers to um, value the change rather than resist the change. Um, and I think having a union member um, as well as a teacher on that committee would be helpful in having that engagement. Um, I have developed my own curriculum in my profession. I've developed a program which engages ninth grade students. Um, and I have tremendous experience. 
I also have children who have been through the public schools in elementary school in Arlington, um, will be at the middle schools and at the high school next year. And I think having that wide experience would be helpful on that committee. Um, like Laura, I have heard from many CPAC parents, um, and I actually started this journey saying, like, I understand special education because those students have been the students I've worked the hardest to engage in the programming I've done at, in my profession. Um, and what I realized in this process is I needed to listen to the Arlington parents. Um, and listening to what they had to say, I really think there are some things we can do that are cost effective and could help um, bridge some gaps and build trust. And I think we can work really um, thoughtfully to make a roadmap for students to, and families to um, access the special, special education process. Um, and I'm grateful that Desi, several years back, came up with the idea that we have CPAC and we have this way that students, uh, groups can work together around special education. So those would be my two committees, thanks. Thank you. And Paul, your response. Thank you. I love the energy and the commitment of uh, the folks who answered the question. I've been chair of the policies uh, committee before, uh, for the past couple of years. And I think that's a good place for me because I've worked in central office for many years. So I understand just sort of the nuts and bolts, nitty gritty of how the system is supposed to work and the day to day operations of the district. I've also worked in curriculum a lot. I've enjoyed doing that work. I've done budget work before. It'd be fun to do that again. It's, it, it's all good, wholesome, fun work. Uh, a couple of things off the, uh, the sheet. I've been spending a lot of time working with the Transportation Advisory Committee as sort of an unofficial liaison because I've been very concerned about uh, schools on school crossings and children being able to walk to school safely. Uh, and one thing that I've done consistently is been a delegate to the Mass Association of School Committees Delegate Assembly every year where we've brought resolutions from Arlington to make schools better. Okay. Thank you. Your mm -hmm. turn to ask a question, Liz. Thank you. Um, so as we all know, there is a finite budget for um, the Arlington Public Schools and for the town of Arlington. And so I'm wondering how you will help to build support for an override campaign and what you see as your contributions to that work. Sure. Um, thank you for that question. I was a I did volunteer during the last override several years before I had kids in the schools, but because I saw what an important uh, how important it was to get that override to build our new high school. And so I, whether I win this election or not, plan on being involved in whatever efforts there are in the future to help continue funding our schools at the level at which that we need them to be funded. And I think the way that I can best contribute to that is that I am, I talk to people all the time about these issues. I'm out in the community, I'm in the schools, I serve on other town committee meet, committees, I'm a member of town meeting. And I think all of these experiences give me the depth and understanding for how important it is that we do the work that's necessary to fully fund our schools. And also understand that this is hard for people, that we are all, that you know, financially it's, it's a sacrifice for many people, but that we will all benefit in the long run from having students who receive the kind of education that I know that they can receive in the Arlington Public Schools. Thank you. Jill. My foray into this was working on the Build Arlington's Future campaign as a precinct captain. And um, the high school override for the building was kind of the easy part. Um, the harder part was the override for the um, operational budget increase. And at the time, we really had to make it clear to town members that school enrollment had increased and that we couldn't operate under the same budget. Um, and I think what was most important to me is to have a clear message um, and a clear positive message. We were proactive with that campaign. We were thoughtful. Um, we had a sense of if we pay now, here's the cost versus if we pay later. Um, and I think it really, being proactive really far outweighs a negative and last minute proposal. Um, I think we want to tell the town we need to maintain excellent programs. Um, we need to attract and retain diverse staff. Liz spoke earlier of um, the 
the difference between the teacher pay in Arlington and some of our nearby communities. Um, and we also need to be able to add support where needed, including things like social workers um, and coaches and help in, in include all our students in learning. Um, I also feel that it doesn't it can't just be an override for one time. Um, I believe we have to bring our community into the schools. We have a beautiful new state-of-the-art high school, and being able to make that high school available for our town is really important. Um, I have seen schools that have students present and teach to community members, and those give our students authentic experiences. Students are able to teach biology to senior citizens or teach um, art to other elementary school kids. And being able to have people come into our schools and see our schools and see the value of what they're paying for has a long-term gain. Thanks. Thank you. Paul? Thank you. $291 million is a boatload of money. And we asked the voters to go and support us with the debt exclusion to build a $291 million high school. And it passed by a three to one margin. The reason why that happened was we engaged with the community for a lot of years explaining why the, the high school needed to be rebuilt. We, we brought forth the facts of our accreditation being in jeopardy. We showed pictures of the high school. The, so by the time that got on the ballot, people would say, well, it's a lot of money and it's gonna cost me a bunch of money in my taxes, but of course we need to do it. It was sort of a, you know, basically a known fact that we, we needed to do this. And that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that the community understands the situation we're in. Similar to the work that Jennifer Seuss did when she was on the committee to convince the com uh, community that the solution to our overcrowding problem moving through the middle school level was to take back the Gibbs School. So. I think what we need to do is have a consistent message so people just intuitively understand why an override is important. And I think the teacher quality is really a key to this. Uh, when we're hiring new teachers, housing costs have increased 56% in the past six years, but teacher salaries only 22 and we're forcing our teachers to live further and further away from Arlington, and they're having long commutes. And if they're commuting out from the other side of 495, they're driving through lots of towns that pay better than we do. So imagine having a shorter commute and earning a couple of thousand dollars more. Concord Carlisle, they'd get $6,200 more, $5,900 more in Burlington. So this message has to be consistent. If we're going to maintain teacher quality in this district, we need a lot of money to go and raise our salary scales. Thank you. And Liz, your response. Um. So I think it's important to consider that only about 20% of voters at Arlington have school-aged children. And so our outreach needs to go beyond the, um, beyond the schools. At the same time, a large percent of our budget goes to our schools. And so it's really important that the parents of school-aged children are doing the bulk of the work to pass an override and be on the ground, reaching out, communicating, knocking on doors, getting out the vote, even though the money is going to support many of the town services. Um, at the same time, the schools are a draw to Arlington. Families move here um, for the schools and they stay. Um, as a school committee member, communicating the needs of our school to the voters and rallying community members to support us is an important role in supporting an override campaign. And finally, we need to demonstrate that we keep our promises. Thank you. <laughs> Laura, your chance to ask a um, question. Thank you. What do you think are the most important ways the school committee can support the mission statement goal of being an equitable educational community where all learners feel a sense of belonging? We start with you. So. So I think the first thing we need to look at is understanding who feels like they do not belong um, and how do we collect that data. Um, I think people have been surveyed out <laughs> in this world in general, um, but when we pick up in a survey something about a group, what's our next step? How do we connect with them and listen to them and really understand um, what the issues are? 
I think once we know the issues, I think we have to design solutions. Um, but I don't think designing solutions is, is the end. So when we're looking at a program to make class size more equitable, what are, are the outcomes of that program? Do the outcomes of that program actually, in the end, make those constituents feel like they belong more? Mm -hmm. um, and I think being really careful to um, not drop in programming, let it go, and actually have it sit around and fester and not um, actually work for uh, many, many years is a concern that I have. Um, I think that we need to empower this to happen in the classroom. Um, I think that I said this before, but there is space or there needs to be space for students to make connections. Um, and not just to their teachers, but students to make connections to other students, um, both in the classroom and on the fields and in the arts. And so I think we've worked in that direction by having fee-free athletics and activities, um, but we need to continue to grow um, and continue to look at whether those activities meet the needs of students. I think there are programming that can be more inclusive to broader groups of students. Do we know that we're including those students? Thank you. Paul. The group that I worry about most are the multilingual families, uh, families of second language learners. Uh, because that's just as important and critical in terms of devoting sufficient resources within the district as it is for, for students with IEP, special ed students. But unlike the parents of special ed students who have an understanding of our political system and know where the leverage points are, uh, second la language learner families generally do not and find our school culture to be different than what they experienced growing up in. I've worked in uh, districts that are primarily second language learner districts or have a large population, um, uh, most recently in Lowell. Uh, one of the challenges we had when we did the superintendent search, we wanted to do outreach to people we don't normally talk to. We wanted to go out and find uh, second language communities, immigrant communities. We wanted to find uh, folks from different religions. Uh, being Jewish myself, I know that there's no structure in the community, and when you're looking to go and address issues with the Jewish community, you're often going to seven different synagogues in surrounding communities to try to pull together something, and we weren't able to find community groups organized around other uh, immigrant groups or other religious faiths. So making those kind of connections it seems like we are going to need to build it because they don't occur naturally within the community. So I'm not sure how we're going to get there, but the superintendent search process made me really, really cognizant of the fact that we have to find some different way to reach the folks that we're not hitting right now. Thank you. Liz, two minutes. Um, I think an important way to ensure an equitable educational community where all learners feel a sense of belonging is to make sure that students see themselves in the curriculum, that students see themselves in the staff that are in our buildings, that we provide a variety of ways for students to access the curriculum. Um, there are many ways to show what one knows, and I think it's important, and I see that um, in strategic priority one, ensuring equity and excellence, that we're gonna make sure that students are able to access um, their curriculum and show their learning in a variety of ways. Um, I also think it's really important that we help students um, who already feel a sense of belonging to understand their, how their um, actions can impact other students in our schools um, and understand what they can do to be more inclusive and to support other students um, in feeling that sense of belonging. Um, from a community perspective, I think that ensuring that we have before and after school care for families so that families feel a sense of belonging in our, in our community, um, and supporting 
Um, continued uh, free lunch is another way that we can continue to make sure that everyone feels a sense of belonging and there isn't a stigma around needing um, being eligible for free lunch or needing free lunch. Um, so, I mean, I think there are a lot of ways in which we can continue to support this mission statement. Thank you. And Laura, your response, one minute. Thank you. Um, I think we know a lot about who feels like they don't belong. And a lot of that information uh, has gone into the strategic plan. And so I think keeping our focus on the four focal groups that are uh, emphasized in that that part of the strategic plan that Liz just mentioned, which is students who are low income, students who are English language learners, students with IEPs and BIPOC students is incredibly important. And I think we do this by supporting curriculums that teach and show the importance of treating everyone with respect, just like Liz said, and taking into account the learning experience of all types of learners. And I talked earlier about one example is the reevaluating curriculums from the perspective of gender inclusivity, but I think there's a lot more work that we have to do in that context. I also think the school committee should support expanding the capacity of the DE, of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office. Thank you. And last question of this round you, goes to you, Jill. In just a short time, three of us will be collaborating together as members of a team. Um, what do you value about each of the other candidates in the race? I, I, ha I have to say uh, I've really enjoyed uh, serving with uh, Liz Exton, uh, although it took me almost two years to actually meet her after she was sworn in because we were all in those Zoom boxes. But I, ca I can say as a group, all of the other folks who are running right now, uh, I, I was fortunate to have uh, coffee with, uh, with, with the two uh, people who were seeking a seat for the first time. The commitment, the knowledge, the, the, the passion and care and the preparation that they've made to make this ru uh, run are just been spectacular. And the thing that I value most in a school committee colleague is somebody who's going to uh, do the work, is to uh, pick up the load because it, it really is an intense job. There's a lot you have to do to make this a success. And the, the question isn't, do I agree with you all the time? Because we never all agree all the time. We have some five, uh, four to three votes. Sometimes we, we're in agreement a, a hundred percent. That doesn't matter. What matters is that we're all working together and sharing the load and, and contributing to the uh, process of making uh, the school committee work. It feels sort of like Thanksgiving dinner in that if there's a divorce or somebody leaves the family and we have somebody new coming in, who's going to get the turkey leg? Uh, and, and we're going to be redefining relationships uh, next month when we have a new member on board. And these are good people and they're, they're going to fit in and they're going to, I'm really confident we're going to really have a good committee moving forward. Thank you. Let's um, yeah, I think it, it's, I, it's a challenge to the voters, I think, this <laughs> year to make a decision. I think that there are four very strong, knowledgeable candidates who mm -hmm. care deeply, deeply, mm -hmm. deeply about the Arlington Public Schools and all want the very best for our schools. Um, as the newest current member on the school committee, I've learned a tremendous amount from Paul, particularly as he mentioned around policy um, and operations. He knows the the legal aspects of the operations of the school committee very well. His, his um, institutional knowledge, having been on the school committee for such a long time, um, provides the entire committee with a, a really great perspective and understanding of where things were and how far they've come. Um, the new, the new candidates, Laura and Jill, I'm so impressed with mm. how much information they mm. have sought out in the last mm. six weeks, trying to learn even more about the school committee, about the priorities, about how it operates, um, understanding all of the nuances of the budget. Um, and, you know, I think that, again, I, as I said, the commitment to our community, um, they've already shown mm. that. Um, and so I know that going forward, they will continue to support our community um, in a lot of different ways. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I began to start think, 
start to think seriously about whether school committee was in my future in the summer of 2020 when I watched school committee meetings with Liz and Paul and the Zoom squares as we prepared for my oldest child to start kindergarten. So in a time of great uncertainty and you know, constantly evolving information and knowledge and changes and recommendations, I watched seven people who clearly cared very deeply about how my entering kindergartner was gonna experience their foray into Arlington Public Schools. And I saw how important it is to have a well-functioning and collaborative school committee. And I'm confident that whichever of the three of us end up on school committee in April, that that will continue. Um, my work in town, but as on town, on town meeting and in other bodies has shown me the value of volunteer leaders who understand how things get done and how think, what you need to do to get things done. And also who understand what it is they don't know. And what I will say that these three other candidates know that I don't know is they've all been classroom teachers. Mm -hmm. And I am the only person here who hasn't been a public school teacher. And I look forward to learning more from fellow school committee members who can bring that perspective while I bring my perspective as a lawyer and someone who's studied policy. Thank you. And last word to you. Thanks for sharing. Um, I wanted to say to Paul, I really have appreciated your long-term commitment to education um, in both Arlington and the state of Massachusetts. Your work with the Mass Association of School Committees, particularly around moving the, removing the high stakes aspects of MCAS um, is admirable. Liz, um, in 2020, you inspired me as a teacher running for school committee in the middle of a pandemic. And part of my decision really is um, thinking of you as a mentor or an inspiration. Um, I also admire the work you did in Brookline this fall while you're negotiating the Arlington contract to really support those teachers in Brookline who did not have the same fortune um, that the teachers in Arlington were having. Um, and Laura, I really do appreciate your volunteerism around Arlington, particularly because I have children at Pierce, your work with the Pierce PTO supporting our teachers and children. Um, and you are the communication <laughs> person for Pierce and the communication oh, is great. <laughs> you have to cut you off uh. there. Um, and that does it for uh, the rounds of questions and leaves us with just the closing statements, which will be one minute each. And I will tell you that the order of the close is Liz Exton and then Laura Gittleson and then Paul Schlickman and then Jill Krajewski. So beginning with you, Liz. Thank you to ACMI for hosting this debate and my fellow candidates for a great discussion. I hope you heard tonight how committed I am to the work on the school committee, both what I have brought to the committee and what more I can contribute. In closing, I wanna remind you of my priorities. First, I wanna support the implementation of our five-year strategic plan. Second, I wanna to continue to work on improving communication, specifically for those just joining the Arlington Public Schools, and to foster better transitions when children move from one school to the next. Finally, I wanna support parity in teacher pay. I will use my experience both on the committee and as a teacher to ensure we can continue to recruit and retain a high quality staff while keeping our tradition of responsible budgeting. It has been my privilege to serve on the school committee for the last three years, and I hope the voters agree that I am the right person for this job and return me to a seat on the school committee. My name is Elizabeth Exton, and I ask for one of your three votes on Saturday, April 1st. Thank you. Laura. Thank you. Thanks so much to ACMI and my fellow candidates for this discussion. I'm running for school committee because I know from my own experience as both a parent and longtime advocate for social justice that when elected officials support policies and allocate resources in ways that make it easier for every child and adolescent to access education, they change lives for the better. In 2023, Arlington schools are well positioned for success. We have a relatively new superintendent, are close to finishing our beautiful new high school, and we are poised to launch an exciting five-year strategic plan. That said, there is a lot of hard work ahead of us. This will require thoughtful policymaking that prioritizes equitable access to learning and providing support for our teachers to do the best work possible. I wanna be a part of that hard work. I'm Laura Gittleson, and I am asking for one of your three votes for school committee. Thank you. Paul. Thank you. 
I'm running for re-election because I want to work with my colleagues on the school committee and the community to find solutions to the challenges before us. The challenges are significant, but we are smart, strong, determined, and we will emerge with even better schools in an even better town. If you want to learn more about me and the issues, I invite you to visit my website, www.schlichtman.org. You will also find a link to the websites of my friends who are sharing the stage. They deserve your consideration for one of your three votes on April 1st. I want to thank ACMI for the opportunity to speak to you today, and thank you for listening. I'm Paul Schlichtman, and I respectfully ask for your support and one of your three votes on Saturday, April 1st. Thank you, and Jill, I'm sure you're tired of hearing this, but <laughs> the last word is yours. I am proud to live in a town where I can sit here as a teacher alongside three other individuals who care deeply about Arlington and value its public schools. As I developed COVID policies in the town where I work, I realized that I wanted to transition my leadership skills to support the town where I live. I threw my hat into the ring because I believe I have the skill set to become an effective member of the school committee. Now, as voters, you have a choice. Arlington citizens value public education and our school system is well positioned to move forward and strive for equity, excellence, and belonging. What you, the voters, now must consider is which candidate has the educational experience to move these priorities from policy to practice. I ask that you consider the combination of my role as a parent, as a teacher, and along with my role in union leadership and allow me the opportunity to help the Arlington Public Schools work towards achieving these priorities. I would be honored to have one of your votes on April 1st. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that will wrap things up. I want to thank uh, the four candidates for the generosity of spirit and the thoughtfulness and the rigor with which they took uh, to this debate. It really has offered great content to the Arlington community. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you running, period. Thank you. Um, this is the school that we're finishing up here, the <laughs> school committee debate for 2023. Um, thanks again to Paul Schlickman, to Liz Exton, to Laura Gittleson, and to Jill Krajewski. Um, I'm James Milan. We'll see you another time.